Hi there everyone, my name's Luke and welcome to my channel. So I've just completed a short tutorial on how to use PixInsight's weighted batch pre-processing script, which is basically an automated method of stacking your images in that program. And I thought it only fair to show you a free alternative using this program, Deep Sky Stacker. Uh, I used this for years and years and it's fantastic. It, and indeed, I still use it sometimes today because it gives you a result far quicker than the uh, PixInsight alternative does, which in, in some cases is quite useful. So with that said, let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is start populating this up with images. So it could be your picture files, darks, flats, bias, etc. You can open them up from the left here, or like I've done, and I'll show you now, you can select the images themselves and drag and drop them. So I'm just going to drag a box over all these lights and drop them into the middle of the program. It's going to ask what files are these. I know that they're lights, so I'll leave that selected and hit OK. I'm going to perform this same task a few times now. So this is for the flat frames, as you can see, L Extreme Flats. Drag them on, tell the program what they are. These ones are flats and hit OK. Same thing for my bias files. Offset slash bias. And indeed, if you had darks that you needed to stack to, now would be the time to do that and tell the program what they are. So on to the next thing. So we're going to hit register the checked pictures. And uh, you don't actually want to stack after registering right now. Indeed, you can if you know that all your data is good or a, perhaps a percentage of it you want to risk. But in my case, I'm going to show you a little bit more about the program and then perhaps you'll have even more of an understanding. So what you want to do before you start registering is hit compute the number of detected stars. And that's basically going to show you a rough estimate of how many stars it's picking up in any given frame. If you selected a master, it would do that from this. Uh, as you go over here, it's going to detect fewer stars. As you can see, 12. That's obviously a wrong estimation and that wouldn't give you a, a good end result and down here it'll detect more stars and too low and it can actually get it wrong and detect noise as stars so you want to be selecting somewhere uh, along this slider which is going to get you a region of between perhaps say 70 to a few hundred stars it won't really matter if you go much above or below that but just as long as it's not wildly at either end of the spectrum you're going to be fine so now I'm just going to hit OK, and what it's going to do is register every single one of these light frames against one another, compute any offsets and things like that compared to what it will determine as the master file. Uh, and it's also going to give every single one of them a score. Now that score that it gives you is based on a few different factors, which is going to populate these boxes in a moment and tell you the full width half max, the number of stars detected, and the brightness of the sky background for each and every single light frame that it successfully registers. So I'll come back to you in a moment and we'll show you some examples of what it's been talking about. All right, so it's just got through registering all those light frames. And indeed, as I mentioned, it's assigned them all with a score going from highest to lowest in this case. So if I just select a frame, it's going to say that it's got a full width at half max of 3.89. That's how tightly focused these stars appear to be. If you zoom right in on one, you can see that they are nice, tight little stars. Uh, the amount of stars it detected in the frame, generally a higher number is a better, uh, better frame. And the sky background, here you want a lower number, so a darker background is a better frame. These are all incredibly low because it was data taken through an Optolong L Extreme dual narrowband filter, which doesn't let through much background light at all. So that's the reason why these are extremely low. If you were taking regular light frames, you'd notice that these were up perhaps might 8 9% might be normal for you to see. Now, if I just scroll down here a little bit, you might notice that these numbers are going down, 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 and you might want to investigate any particularly curiously low numbers, perhaps like this absolute lowest one here, 251. The full width at half max is quite high. The amount of stars it detected is quite low. And the sky background is about twice as bright as that best frame. Now, if you know your targets and you're from the UK, um, you probably know why this is. This is Crescent Nebula data. and at the time of night that this was taken, 
this this target is actually very low so this tech frame we're taking actually at just turning 10 pm so it weren't really very much above the horizon and you can see probably some evidence of that by this atmospheric dispersion that's showing uh, a red side and a green side there wasn't anything wrong with the focus it's just the atmosphere had been dist dispersing the light differently because it's passing through so much of it um, I happen to know that all these frames were all right, but if you perhaps you investigate one of your low scoring frames, you might discover that perhaps there's lines behind these stars, which would indicate uh, perhaps a tripod knock or a guiding error. Um, you may notice that the sky background level is curiously high, uh, in which case it might be passing cloud got you, or uh, things like that, or your optics fogging, fogging up if you don't have uh, two heaters installed. There's, there's any number of reasons why all these things could be going wrong, but if you have a quick look, you might find some clues as to why. Uh, and as this is just a bit of dispersion, I'm actually going to let this stack all these frames, but if you found something you didn't want it to stack, it's as simple as unticking it from the side. So now we can move on to the next step, which is stacking the checked pictures. Now this is automatically going to want to stack uh, because there's a lot of frames using media and Kappa Sigma clipping and that's perfect. That's actually what I want it to do. But if you had different choices, you might know that you have no airplane trails, no tracking errors, uh, no satellites passing through or anything. I can't see this happening very often, but let's say you did and you checked all your frames and it was like that. You might want to stack with average, uh, that'll get your absolute highest signal to noise ratio from your images. Uh, and indeed that works quite well if you have quite few images. But as you can see here, I've got 55, which is quite a large pool of data for this program to compare one frame to the next to the next and decide what is an outlier and to get rid of it basically with the median. So median Kappa Sigma clipping is the one I'm going to want to use because I'm sure that there will be satellite trails and things pass through in all these nine and a half hours of data or whatever it ended up being. So make sure that's selected and I'm just going to hit OK and hit OK again. And now it's going to compute the offsets and stack these up. Okay, so it's just got done stacking that image uh, and it's just finished creating an auto save. I'll just uh, manually save it to show you how. So you move over to the side here, enter a name, ABC, whatever it is. Tell it what uh, type of file to save as a 16 bit per channel TIFF. In this case, is absolutely fine. Just save that. And then you could take that TIFF, close this program down uh, and open it in any processing software of your choice, be it Photoshop, Pixinsight, Serial, wherever you want to use uh, and process that image further, knowing that then you've hopefully got the best from your data. And uh, yeah, basically that's all there is to it. It's, it's quite a simple process as you hopefully been able to see from that. And if this helped at all, then please consider leaving a, a subscribe or a like or comment or anything like that. As I've mentioned before, I love to read it all and uh, it's great interacting with you guys. So thanks very much for watching. I hope this helped some of you and uh, see you next time.